Greetings guys and girls, and a very warm welcome watchers, the sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. And it is my pleasure and present purpose to be coming at you right now with a live one versus one battle featuring spawning in the south. It's gonna be the Vermax forces of Jezelin, the Spanish Stallion. And spawning in the north, it is gonna be the United Kingdom forces of Pollack, uh, who you'll note is actually mounting one of the new mobile assault regiment commanders so uh, let's hope he picks this one so we get to uh, see some spicy land mattress play uh i for one am very excited to see these new units in the field um so uh as the two uh, players move out and get underway i will just point out that uh, actually this uh, this map is called crossroad this is a new map in the matchmaking pool it looks very nice to me i'm uh, excited to see how this map plays out uh so yeah crossroad here new map added um so and also whilst these two players you know get get the initial scuffles underway I'm going to take a going to take a minute or two here just to talk about the last week or so so there was that patch which came out which kind of just broke everything no secret there not the best of patching uh, from from relic but you know these things happen and uh, we've, we've been able to deal with it there's been a couple of hot fixes many things are now working although many things still broken like infantry veterancy but uh, uh, so yeah on account of that uh, top notch team league uh, was actually postponed last week none of the teams really felt like playing with the game in its uh, in, in the state that it was last week and that's understandable so uh, there was no top notch team league sorry I didn't announce anything about that I just uh, kind of assumed that uh, everyone would get the picture if I didn't put any you know alerts about the upcoming twitch or anything like that uh, so uh, yep um, ESL did happen uh, and ESL will be happening this weekend uh, so yeah this weekend I will be casting the North American ESL uh, that will be on tightropes twitch the address of which I'll um, put in the comments and some announcements in the future uh, so yeah it will be um, tightrope and me will be your casting team for the NA ESL this Sunday now we'll be starting in the round of 16 there that'll be getting underway around about nine o'clock Greenwich Mean Time London time uh, so yeah tune on into tune on into that for some epic games and banter with uh, tightrope and me uh, so let's see what else oh yes that's right um this Sunday no, sorry this Saturday that will be Saturday the Mm, calendar would be useful right now uh, anyway yeah this Saturday coming it will be the PC gamer weekender event uh, in London which is gonna be really really cool myself AE stormless uh, kluge helping hands um, Kyle from relic he's the community leader uh, we'll be there this Saturday the 5th of March uh, we're just going to be hanging out, having fun, playing some games, uh, and just chilling out, basically. So, if you're in London and you fancy coming along, if you've already got a ticket and you're definitely going to be at the PC Gamer Weekender, uh, and, 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 and if you want to, do come and say hi to us. It'll be awesome. Um, we're, we're just up for good times, hanging out and uh, having some laughs. And hey, if you want to if you want to take me on at Company of Heroes 2, that would be really fun as well. So, yeah, if you fancy your odds against the Magpie, which, um, le le let me tell you, you'd be mad to, because obviously I'm, like, damn good at this game. Um... Yeah, uh, then yeah, we could we could play some games or something. It'll be really good fun. So uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Let's see. Oh, and of course, Top Notch Team League, the Vet3 events, uh, will be returning next Monday. I'll be hosting that show, hopefully with uh, Festive Long Johns, my legendary co-caster, saving me from disaster. Um, so let's, uh, let's turn our attention to the battle at hand that's going on here. Now, bear in mind at the moment, for some reason, allies are still red and Axis are still blue. So sozzles about that. Hope that's not uh, confusing anyone too much um uh so yeah let's see uh we've got whoa we've got triple mg42 here out of jazeline this is totes unusual this is not something i've seen before actually so we'll have to see what his plans are what what, what? Enemy are so he has skipped territory. infantry company and gone straight into like the mechanized company so he won't be able to build mortars grenadiers or snipers that's a thing uh so Jezelin here trying something a little unusual here very interesting. The British player Pollack, he's gone up to three squads of Tommies, looking slightly more standard there. He also has a Vickers accompanying them. MG42's here, catching these Tommies in arc and just immediately forcing a fallback. Um, Pollack also doing a reasonably good job at, uh, at marshalling the map. If I crack the tack here, so help me elucidate here. Uh, you can see, you know, he's got two of the victory points. He's secured his own munitions and fuel. So it's basically even Stevens, except for the fact that he's got two victory points. So pretty nice stuff there. Uh, for Pollack, uh, able to secure a slight, at the moment, victory point lead, but that is, well, actually, it's, it's even at the moment, but he's about to be securing a victory point lead, so that's good stuff for the British forces against Vermax, and I, I guess this is kind of a symptom of, of, of Yezelin's weird, uh, opening here, and so far as, like, you know, all these MGs are very good, but they're not particularly good at pushing or being aggressive. So he's set up his perimeter here with a number of MGs facing here, if I just, so he's got this MG facing here, these two MGs facing this direction like this, uh, so... 
Uh, setting up a nice perimeter here. It's going to be quite difficult for just Tommies to get through. Looks like he's got a 251 half track on the field right now. And I wonder, flame projectors are going to be coming on that. Uh, the British player has gone to pl platoon command post and he does have his AEC scout car researched and building. Now bear in mind the uh, AEC had some changes in the most recent patch. The main cannon was reduced back to or reverted back to how it previously was so much less effective against infantry but still potent against vehicles. The machine gun however has been buffed significantly. That is now quite the anti-infantry uh, piece and that's going to be, uh, that, that's gonna be uh, the, the state of the new AEC basically. So look to see the AEC deal its damage to infantry in a much more linear and predictable way. Uh, which is uh, basically going to be much better for the health of the game, in my opinion. But we'll have to see. Uh, this is going to be one of the first times I've seen the new AEC in action. This flame half-track already off to a very nice start. Burninating down the Vickers machine gun team and, and just, just burninating the Tommies. But here comes the AEC. Bang! Getting a good hit on the 251 straight off the bat. And this 251 is just kind of stricken at the moment, using a line of sight blocker actually for a second there to get itself out of danger. Bang, takes one more hit. We need some kind of smoke or another line of sight blocker, otherwise this AC is going to take it out. That's 30 fuel, 200 manpower, and 120 munitions going up in uh, smoke there for Jeslin. And I don't really think that had an opportunity to pay for itself either. This AC here is going to get all on top of this MG42, forcing the fallback. You notice there the damage from the machine gun there, the coax doing the majority of the work against this MG team. We do have Panzer Grenadiers on the field, though. Uh, now, having spent the 120 for the Flame Projectors on the 251 half-track, Yeslin doesn't really have the money for Shreks yet, but he almost does, actually. Like, there we go, he now has the 120, so I wonder if we'll see the upgrade. He also has a Pack 40 coming onto the field just now. So uh, this AEC, okay, it's picked up a 251 half-track, but yeah, here come the Shrek upgrades, so its uh, mobility and its usefulness on this battlefield about to be severely curtailed by the unit choices and upgrade choices here for Jezelin. So nice stuff here. Uh, and it, it almost feels like losing that 251 half-track. It almost feels like Jezelin's uh, composition here is still ahead. Now, MG42 here in a nice building, going to force these Tommies back. Another MG42 in a nice position here. But the Vickers were able to suppress it. The AC gets round behind it. And there could well be a wipe coming here for Pollack. He's going to stay on target. Stay on target. As I take a sip of my drink. Pack 40, though, in a nice position, preventing me from rehydrating, forcing smoke on this AEC, and that is going to get out of there. And I'm finally going to take a sip on this drink. Now, Panzer Grenadiers get into this building at crucial timing. They come out. The Shreks are ready. The shots are forthcoming. And that is an abandoned AEC. Oh, my God. Looks like, uh, actually, uh, Jeslin's just going to take it out, which is very sensible. Remember, of course, when vehicles get abandoned these days, uh, there's an automatic engine destroyed result, so retrieving uh, retrieving abandoned vehicles is now very, very much more difficult than it used to be, much more risky. So Jazlin just has no interest in trying to recruit this vehicle on the doorstep of his opponent's base. He is just going to keep pushing, and look at the mini-map, how he is pushing. I'm going to just crack the tack here. He's getting the cutoff outside his opponent's base. He's got this pack 40 in a lovely position. He still has two MG42s which are pushing the flanks. This one in the north grabbing a victory point. Here comes a wave of Tommies, and there's no MG in position right now, actually. This MG42 getting set up in the heavy p cover provided by these gravestones. Uh, a little, uh, kind of slightly uh, morbid but uh, functional cover there. Um, and another, this MG42 here in this building is m brutality actually. So these Tommies just like, nope. Turns out, actually, you know what? I think almost the best choice for Pollack right now, he nearly has the 400 manpower. If he, if he could just build a mortar pit here, that would actually be quite nice right now, actually. I think that's almost the best choice. Jeslin, on the other hand, he's gone for this Zweihundred Zvein Zvansish Scout Car, which, remember, this was also buffed in the most recent patch. This now has, like, a third more health than it used to, so this is going to be quite a cool unit now, actually, I think. Um, like I say, uh, owing to the fact that I haven't been casting much since they broke the game last week, uh, I haven't really seen this new unit in action, so this is going to be really exciting. Uh, Royal Engineers with the Flame Projector up Upgrade, flamethrower upgrade, gonna get into this building, but the flamethrower doesn't do much to a 222. This MG42, though, in danger here for Jeslin. Fallback coming down at nice timing. A nice push here from Pollack, but I feel like Jeslin also responding nicely. He's falling back in good order, kiting back, doing good damage with his units. This 222 here, hiding behind the building. This six pounder for the British forces is not gonna be able to find a shot. And this 222, the auto cannon, the machine gun, just hosing these Tommies right now. Uh, this MG42 at the north, though, does get flanked, so Jeslin has to fall back. Two squads of Tommies, gonna be enough to see through that one. And Pack 40 here in a good position, although there are no vehicles for the Brit forces, but yeah, still in a good position. This uh, Vickers gun finds itself an MG42 here on the right flank. The 222 repositions to capitalize, and Jeslin, it seems, is going to have repulsed Pollack's advance. No mean feat, because that was a very nice advance here. Uh, and indeed, actually, even Jeslin was not able to fully parry this. He's going to be losing this position here, which was held by an MG42. Tommy's here going to be grabbing this victory point. So... 
Uh, very nice plays from both players. I'm liking what I say, see here. Pollack, not a player that I've actually cast before, but I am quite impressed. Ah, oh, he's just spawned some, uh, he's just spawned some, uh, commandos. Where are these guys? Okay, here they are. So, commandos gonna spawn out of an ambient building owing to this new mobile assault regiment ability. Uh, they're gonna get on top of this, uh, pack 40, which Jazlyn desperately runs to the protection of a flamethrower and the 222. Gammon Bomb comes down on the building, but it's not enough because Jazlyn dodges nicely there. Six pounders in position, though. Starts countering the 222, which uses the building to block the line of sight. The flamer still hitting these, uh, these commandos. The pack 40 on desperately low health, but Jazlyn actually able to save it. Ah, oh, Jazlyn, you're so good at this game. Oh my god, he's able to parry what- I, I feel like 99% of the time that's a dead pack 40 for, for the majority of players. Right, British commanders don't take prisoners. Those are some hard-ass mofos. And they just deployed out this building on top of the pack 40. He dives it for the one place where it could possibly survive. The flamer being in this building and the 222 comes across immediately to support. And he's able to get it out with two men on like the bare minimal of minimum of health. And it's fair to say there is a small element of luck in that. Like there is definitely a chance that even with that fine play he could have lost that but he's not going to and Pollack's position right now severely compacted he has a number of units he's having a difficult time using the MG42s are providing so much control here for Jezelin and the 222 complementing them so nicely and just in case there's an AC he's got Shrek Panzer Grenadiers and a Pack 40 which survived that 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 last encounter with the commandos so Pardon me, although both players actually more or less on similar size armies, Jezlin was a slight lead in that department. Like, look at the map control, you know, like Jezlin is uh, doing this very nicely. And I think soon he'll be able to either take the cut off or just directly pressure this fuel point here, this munitions point here, and of course the all important victory point. The score line as well, opening up a little bit, an 80 point more or less uh, difference right now between the two players, but that's going to be increasing. And uh, now there's a Vermax sniper on the field. Pow! They see me taking fire, getting my nosh out of here. Now here comes some Royal Engineers. Well, I didn't quite see how they were able to get around here, but there's just an MG42 in position to catch them as well. Jeslin's going to be able to uh, field them very nicely. Here comes some Tommies and some Commandos thinking about making a push here, but the MG42 in this building is still good. And you know what? You know, I hate to say I told you so, but uh, a mortar pit in this position here for Pollack would have been really spicy. I feel like that would have made this whole thing for Jeslin like super untenable. He'd have to have maybe uh, gone for some mortar crews or something to to um, get rid of uh, a mortar pit in that position if that was going to be the case. And because all of the fighting has been within quite a small radius of the British player's base, a mortar pit here would have been really nice. Like a mortar pit here would have had range to like maybe here maybe just a bit further and this this includes all the critical buildings for uh, Jezlin's control it includes a lot of the positions he's using over here in the west to cover the British players base um, so I just really like that choice Ugh. mines here being deployed by these pioneers gonna claim a few Tommies who have to be careful yeah there we go they're gonna fall back are these Tommies serious Oh, very brave Tommies there, but they are actually okay. There are no more, no more mines there, so in the end, okay. More Tommies here on the right flank. They're going to get parried away by a sniper, some Panzer Grenadiers, and this 222, which I have to say, since the patch, I am super excited to go and micro. Now, we do have a mortar pit coming from the British player. Here we go! Yeah! Pollack making the right decision here. Thank goodness. This is so cool. Awesome. This, this, uh, this, I'm happy for so many reasons right now. Uh, not all of which are even related to this game. But I, I'm happy most of all because Pollack is making the right choice, which means this game now could go on a bit longer and he's actually going to be able to start fighting back at Jeslin here. And also, Pollack has made me look like a rather smart caster who actually knew what he's on about because, you know, uh, I called it, guys. I called that one. Anyway. Uh, 222 here now has infantry detection. Of course, that's his veteran. Wow, the mortars actually almost kill this straight away. Wow. But anyway, yeah, the 222 does now have veteran C1, so it does have the infantry awareness ability. This allows uh, Jezlin to spend the very cheap price of 10 munitions to uh, reveal enemy infantry on the minimap, which is pretty spicy. A very useful ability to have. A bit like the Kubelwagen's ability, but, uh, uh, you know, temporary and cost munitions. Kubel, Kubel light, if you like. Um... So yeah, uh, let's see now. Sorry, I'll stop panning around like a madman and try and just follow the action in a slightly more smooth manner. Looks like uh, Pollack's going to be just spending a barrage on this building here. Panzer Grenadier's going to come across, chalk off one of these Royal Engineers. Actually, this is a nasty concave. I don't know why these Royal Engineers are poking out. Maybe just to see what's out there. They're not going to like what they see, however. And that's going to be a rapid fallback for tea and biscuits back at the British base. Uh, looks like we got uh, just, I don't know, like... If Jezelin can take this point, or any of these northern points... Pollack is in serious danger. As it is, despite the minimap being so much blue and so little red, 
Pollock's actually kind of okay, because he holds a fuel point, he holds a munition point, and he, crucially he holds one of the victory points, which means he's not bleeding that fast. His development is not being retarded seriously, um, because, by the way, look it up in the dictionary, uh, alternate definition of retarded does mean slow down. Um, is not being retarded seriously because he's still getting reasonable fuel and munitions income. Not great, and definitely, like, you know, way worse than Jezelin's, but enough to keep him in this game. And let's not forget that once the British forces survive to a certain point, basically once they get that company command post online, they do have access to reasonably cheap but very effective armor in the Cromwell, the Centaur, and, the, uh, and, and you know, the other options from that building, Firefly, Hammer Anvil Text, so forth. They start getting very efficient once they get there. So Polak at the moment, he's probably okay with just bleeding at this rate. Yeah, there's 120 points now, the, the, the difference here between the two players. Uh, wow, Commando's going to use their sprint here. The sniper, though, Jeslin, nerves of steel, doesn't call it back just runs to the safety of this MD-42. The commandos get all kinds of suppressed. The 222 comes in for some help, and uh, this, uh, these commandos are going to have to GTFO. This mortar pit, though, is doing reasonable damage, I feel. Yeah, boom! Just as I say that, detonating a geezer off of this uh, MG-42 team. And uh, I'm going to have a sip on my drink. But wow, behind this, actually, I haven't been keeping an eye on the Axis tech at all. jeslin has gone straight to Battle Phase 3. He has constructed his heavy panzer corps, and you hear that? That is the sound of a finely engineered German tank entering the battlefield. That is the Panther. And uh, that, that represents significant problems for the uh, British player. Now, usually what you see players do in games uh, is um, they'll hold on to their resources uh, so that they can, they can counter-invest to, to defeat what, what their opponent goes for. Usually the player who's ahead won't invest in stuff. The player who's behind, you know, the onus is on them to invest in an armored unit. And, uh, and, then, and then the player who's ahead can counterpick that. Jezelin feels like he's so far ahead and that the Panther is such a good all-rounder that actually he can just go ahead and get this out and start doing damage now. And this is a really intimidating statement. This is a Panther tank that just says, I'm really far ahead and I'm going to get so far... I'm just going to use this Panther to get further ahead right now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'm liking the choice. I'm liking the camo, indeed. Like, check this out. Ugh. What a beautiful, what a beautiful little tank this is. Did you guys see that newspaper story, like, about six or eight months ago? I think it, it might have been longer, it might have been shorter, it's hard to judge, actually, but... They found that guy in, um, in Germany who just, like, in his basement, in, in, in his basement garage, he just had an almost mint-conditioned panther tank that no one knew about. And the police found it and, like, confiscated it, and, like, he was, like, arrested and stuff, because it turns out you're not allowed to just, you know, have a weapon of war in your basement. But, I mean, yeah, he just he just had a German panther tank, like, in almost mint condition, just in his basement. Like, what a thing to just have, you know? Like, I want to know the story of what happened towards the end of the war, which which which, which led to that panther just being in this guy's basement. Um, but anyway, yeah, so anyway, yeah, panther tanks are pretty cool. Anyway, so uh, these um, these Panzer Grenadiers here, they're going to get forced back. This is a lot of Tommies, more than you really want to take on with your expensive infantry here. There's an MD-42 here, which is going to catch them in arc. So look how clever Jezelin is just luring this ball of infantry into the arc of this MG, which is actually already busy, so they're not going to get suppressed, but the 222 and the panther tank are very mobile assets, and they're going to enable Jezelin to police this area of the field very quickly. Here comes the, pa uh, the uh, six-pounder, though. Pardon me. As Jezelin uses uh, incendiary rounds on this MD-42 to enable him to more quickly displace this infantry here. And uh, yeah, the six-pounder came in. It takes a hit onto the Panther, and it is a good hit. But, uh, you know, there's a sniper in its flank, and this six-pounder right now is absolutely crucial. Whoa, the sniper is actually going to get some more shots in here. And I'm, as I was just saying, whoa, this six-pounder is so crucial right now for the British forces. If he loses this, I think he basically loses the game, because then the Panther can just park in his base on his face, and that is not a good place to, to be. And he does lose the six-pounder. Uh, that's the noise of a British man being sniped off of an AT gun crew. They, they always go, bleh. Uh, Magpie's voice acting, absolutely flawless, I'm sure you'll agree. There are mines here, teller mines, all over the doorstep to the British base. And Jezelin is a man in the driving seat right now. Polak is on the Jezelin train and his ticket is about to get punched right now. Jezelin is the driver, he's the conductor, he, he is the one-man crew of the, uh, of the Jezelin train right now. And, uh, the next stop is victory. So, uh, all change please. He's even got telemines on this side of the base. Jezelin, you monster. Oh, man. Sometimes, sometimes even a one-sided game, it's nice to watch someone who's on top of the game, who's really good at it, just ply their trade. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I realize that this game is now quite one-sided. It hasn't been all the way through, because Polak has actually been putting up something of a fight. Okay, he's going to choose this moment to GG, and you have to understand why. He's backed into an insanely hard position now. He's going to quit, and that makes a lot of sense. 
But sometimes it is just nice to watch a player who's good at the game be good at the game. You know, you can learn a lot and there's just that sort of uh, that gentle feeling of satisfaction you get from just knowing that someone's really good and they're doing it well. It's probably second only to that satisfaction, that feeling of satisfaction you get from being that player, I think, probably. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Jezelyn going to rack up another win here. Possibly not quite, not, not surprising, but Polak here, you know, putting together some nice plays. And, and, you know, maybe if he was able to build a land mattress or, you know, if he'd have got this mortar pit down or even two mortar pits here, then things would have looked differently. Um, because I feel like, if I crack the tack, I feel like when Jezelyn was positioning his machine guns around Polak's base here, like, um, there was the mortar pit could have come down earlier and that would have enabled Pollack to put down to have a much better sort of mid to late early game and a much better early mid game and I also think if he had one mortar pit there then he could have built another one possibly slightly further out or even still within his base and that would have been uh, that would have been a strong thing to do according to me uh, so anyway uh, I am going to uh, sign out just now because that is my phone beginning to ring so thank you very much for watching and I will be coming at you uh, with another game very shortly